know how to build a circuit tester. So at this point, they have the battery and light bulb hooked up. Now at this point, they're just going to add one extra wire here. So if this works correctly, when they join these two wires together, the light bulb will light up. When they take this apart now, obviously it's an open circuit. Nothing's going to happen. But now they're going to get this bag of stuff that they're going to do one at a time as far as first they're going to make a prediction and then they're going to see does this conduct electricity. We're going to use the term conductors and insulators for what does or does not conduct electricity easily. So they would take it out one at a time. So for instance, the golf tee. Would we think that the golf tee is going to conduct electricity? No. No. So they would then test it by putting the wires against different sides of the golf tee. Obviously different sides though, because if they put it on the same part of the golf tee and wires accidentally touch each other on the tee, they're going to think that it conducts electricity. So that they need to be touching different sides of the tee. But you can look at each item, make a hypothesis, see what you think it will or will not light up, and then test it. So this is another example of an observational exploration where students are looking for patterns about which materials conduct electricity efficiently. Because obviously, technically, everything conducts electricity at some level, but the efficient ones are the ones that make the light bulb light up. That, the difference being between a conductor and an insulator. And as an extension, some of your kids who are high flyers can try to make switches. An example um, being that you know they could take an index card, put a brad fastener through it, uh, actually two brad fasteners through it, and you know, flip the switches down to the metal touches. Other switches could be used like a light bulb holder that's empty, so a switch would be if you just press the bottom down so it's metal on metal, that would create a working switch as well. Two different ways for students to possibly make switches.